Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India
f theta 1 square dy minus w double dot 1 integral 0 to l s y f w 1 f theta 1 dy plus omega theta square theta 1 integral 0 to l i y f theta square dy equals integral 0 to l you will have the moment expression. So, that is the m y y comma t f theta 1 y t y this is w 1 ok. So, you see now I have two ordinary differential equations ok. Because these integrals you, you can evaluate because you know the mass per unit length of the wing this is the assumed mode simply multiply get this term this is mass offset product of these two and this is anyway the same expression as the first one and you lift expression is what you have to write from the other one because you know we have used because I am just writing it for convenience because you have to be careful how the lift earlier was defined and now because you say w is displacement in the positive z whereas our lift was obtained from h which is downward ok. So, I will write the expression for lift per unit length this is pi rho b cube omega square minus l l h here you will put minus w 1 f y b because lift is a function of y ok w 1 is the generalized coordinate and you put a minus sign because this is h you took it downward positive here you are taking w that is why this minus sign. Then minus theta 1 f theta this is a, I should use f w 1 sorry f w 1 theta 1 f theta 1 y into l alpha minus l h half plus a this is my lift expression ok. Now, when you go to moment m y y of t you will have pi rho b to the power 4 omega square you will again use m h minus l h half plus a into same minus w 1 f w 1 y over b. Then you will have the other term you will have plus m alpha minus l alpha plus m al m h into half plus a plus l h half plus a whole square into theta 1 f theta 1 y ok. Now, you see this expression you will go and put it here multiplied by f theta 1 y integrate ok. And what you will have w 1 theta 1 theta 1 w 1 on the left hand side also you have w 1 theta 1 ok. Now, you this is identical to 
are a foil problem. Only thing is everything becomes an integral. Okay. Get the integrals first. Evaluate the integrals. Put them. Okay. Then you collect all the terms. You can always substitute that. Now I am assuming W equals. Maybe I erase this part because you have to assume. Okay, I am assuming my W one is e power i omega t, and theta one is. Okay, that means I am assuming harmonic motion. This is what you have assumed even there. Substitute that. Then you are going to give a equation in e power i omega t will cancel out everywhere. You will have w one theta one in all this w one bar. Actually, you can say w one bar. Hmm? It will be an eigenvalue problem. Okay, and that is exactly what we have in the two year point. So this problem, after substituting that. And then making this assumption, it will become a complex eigenvalue problem. Now you apply VG method or PK method, okay? Because VG method, what do you do? You first assume a value of k, get the CFK, substitute here, then solve for the eigenvalues, okay? Basically, it will be a complex equation. Eigenvalues, you get x plus i y. I explained to you last time. Then correspondingly, you get the g. You plot. Whenever the g goes to zero, that is your plot point. Suppose if you have a structural damping, because this is one thing. Structural damping means because usually you have structure. The material inside drops when it vibrates. That introduces a little bit of damping in the structure. Okay, that is what is called structural damping. But I I hope you all know the difference between viscous damping and the structural damping. Both are damping. Okay, there are certain subtle differences. I will briefly describe that because that part you have to know. What is the structural damping? What is the viscous damping? Viscous damping is what F is some C X dot. You will write energy dissipated per cycle. Okay, dissipated per cycle of the viscous damper is actually pi C. Omega x square because energy dissipated is f dx. Okay, that is integral f dx over one cycle. This is your W over one cycle. F is c x dot. Now you assume x is equal to x sine omega t or s cos omega t. You substitute, you integrate over one period. This is what you will get. That means the energy dissipated is a function of Amplitude square, and in the function of frequency, pi is it comes out of the integration constant. C is the damping constant. In the case of structural damping, this is called structural damping or hysteretic damping. That is another name. Okay, the energy dissipated. It is the experimental observation. Energy dissipated. Per cycle, is they are write it as pi k beta x square. What the structural damping? They found the energy dissipated is a function of amplitude square, but it is independent of the frequency of oscillation. Okay. Now, how if you have A damping, which has this characteristic, 
that the energy dissipated per cycle is independent of omega, then what is the type of damping that is called the complex damping. What they say is complex stiffness, uh, sorry not complex damping, complex stiffness down. How that comes about is I will just mention that part. See your standard equation is m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x equals f of t. Now if I have a different damping, different type of damping what I normally do is I write c equivalent, okay. when I write c equivalent here I equate both of them, I find out what is the equivalent viscous damper corresponding to structural damping. So, I will get what C E Q will be what K omega. So, I substitute here that will become M x double dot plus K beta over omega f of t right. But x is, I assume it is a harmonic motion only, all these things are for harmonic motion. So, if I assume x is equal to x bar E i omega t, x dot will be i omega x. So, what will happen? Omega omega will cancel out, I will get k into 1 plus i beta x. I am substituting that. So, this term is now complex stiffness. Okay. So, what it means is the energy are in this particular case what they will say is the damping force okay, is proportional to displacement. It is not pro see C x dot when you write C x dot damping force this is damper damping force is proportional to velocity. Whereas, if you talk structural damping, they will say it is the damping force is proportional to displacement, but it is 90 degree phase okay, to displacement. That is why the phase comes here i, but it is proportional to displacement okay. and this term is called the complex stiffness term. Now, you will understand complex stiffness k over m if I take it omega square, omega square into 1 plus i beta. This is what we have done in the Platon problem, V g method, we simply added a some structural fictitious, but your structure itself can have a damping, then that you can add it, you simply go here omega square simply multiply by 1 plus i g b. That means, I have included a structural damping for this. Similarly, I can put for omega theta square, I will put 1 plus i g theta, but normally structural damping you say bending does not have something separate torsion does, they will say all are same, okay, they use the same. Now, if you have 0 damping in your VG diagram wherever it crosses the 0 point the g you will say that is a flutter. Suppose if you have a inherent structural damping, you will draw that line in your this is the g, this is that u b over the line will go like this, this is the 0. If you already have some damping, you extrapolate, you say this is your flutter point, okay, because you already have a positive damping in the structure that positive should become 0. So, that is how okay. So, this becomes if you do not have any other this is your g bet g b equals may be g theta this is a, usually these are very small value of damping 0 0.03, 0 0.03. See if it is 2 3 percent very large, g theta is actually you know, 0, 3, 2, 3 percent is very large damping, okay. 
sometimes you will get 0.5 percent, 0.5 percent means 0.0 not, not by the value of that g, okay. If you get 3, 4 percent, you will get a very high damping, you follow. That is the large value of damping, it is difficult to provide that much, that is why people say composite material, we can have some uh, constraint layer in between so that when it vibrates, I have some kind of uh, flexible which will dissipate. Now multifunctional materials, th these are all you know, current uh, research people are doing. So that I can have a good damping also built into my structure because normal metallic structure, the structural damping will be of the order of 0.2 percent to 0.3 percent at the most 0.5. Is it clear? Now, you, you, have you understood this part? You can also apply, I told you, that lift itself can be written as in the finite state model. Okay, then you have a time domain aerodynamic model. That also you can use here. Okay. Then you will have in addition to this W1 theta 1, last class I told you, you get the x, they will be additional state variable and you will have corresponding equation for that, okay. And then you add those equations also and then solve. You understand? This is how the flutter problem is solved for a wing, okay. Now we take the next topic, which I will give you a very brief uh, introduction. <coughs> That's all. I will not go into the details of the problem. I'll just briefly describe what is the problem, what are the key aspects, and then I'll give the reference for that, so which you can look at it. You can learn because it is not complicated. The next uh, topic is the panel flutter, okay. What does it mean by panel flutter? See, till now we said that uh, if I draw an aeropoil, this is a panel. The panel does not deform or if I have something like this, if I have a panel, the flow is going over it. If it starts deforming like this, that is a card wise deformation like you are fluttering of a flag, what happens? The flag is changing its shape, it is just deforming, the shape itself is changing, okay. Till now, we said our aerofoil panel, aerofoil retains its shape, only thing is it can rotate, it can bend, but its surface cannot deform. Now you talk about the fish type of, you know, okay. Here we talk about the surface itself deforms. Then what type of problem we will have? This is what is first talked about. Hey, if my surface is also moving, then it is a complicated problem, okay. That way that problem you do not talk about flow past aerofoil, what you do is you take a panel, this is the panel and the panel is fixed on a, because between two supports, now the panel can deform. If it is a very thin thing, you can have deformation because you know that when wind blows, if you have even if you have a 
some other shamyana or anything. What it does? It does lateral vibration. Okay. Now those things at subsonic speed, for it happen, it should be very thin, very thin. But for the aerospace application, there is nothing like uh, that thin material. We don't use that. Therefore, it does not happen in subsonic cases. Actually, the phenomena was observed in uh, the aerospace line. I am not talking about the flag fluttering or a shamyana, you put it, then wind blows and then the whole thing can go up and down. It can even have a static divergence type of a problem. Okay. Now, the first time the panel flutter was observed in it was a German V2 rocket. Okay. Okay. Because the panel started vibrating. But it is flow past only one side. Please understand. It is an external flow. Internally, it is a whatever pressure in you, you can take it as an atmospheric pressure. It is not like an airfoil. In the sense, the flow is on both sides. So, here, normally you say, what is the you have to get the pressure difference. Inside pressure, you already know. You say that is P infinity. But what is the surface pressure? And this was observed in normal for aeronautical thing, for the thickness of the panel. It happens at uh, supersonic speeds. Okay, that is why they say it's a supersonic panel pressure. So, 60s people were solving this problem of panel flutter substantially. But then supersonic speed, so they started using unsteady aerodynamic theory associated for supersonic. And we found out, you remember we derived piston theory. Okay. You can use piston theory to get the aerodynamic force on the surface. And then solve, but the problem is a panel problem. It is not a wing type of problem. So, the whole study went into what kind of boundary condition we can have. Then in a panel, you know that under thermal stress, please understand, when you have constraint like this, if you have temperature changes, the stresses will get developed, right? Axial stress because of the end fixity. Then the panel can deform due to thermal loading. And when it deforms, your surface is changing. Now that can also another cause. So your surface deformation thermal. So how the problem was treated is, I will just draw a, a simple diagram and then I will basically give you a few introductory thing, then we can, okay. You take a, <coughs> now please understand you have to know panel equations, okay. Your structure is not a wing, it is a panel. or you talk about plate problems, okay. So, the problem was x, y, this is, you put a panel which is acted on by
and the panel deforms in W direction. You will have pressure, okay, everywhere. This Nx, Ny are the compressive stress. You can say due to the surface, a boundary condition, okay. Now, this is the problem. You can now start deriving the equation for a you can have curved panel, okay. you can have flat panel and then the pressure this is the flow which is coming over it not under it, okay. because this is completely covered and the dimensions A, B. So, the problem that was considered is basically a plate problem. So, initially you take my plate is flat, under the action of n x and y what will be my deformation, because this is like you are you have to talk about the for small deformation the governing equations, I will write the governing equation for this d 10 to the power 4 w, w is a function of x, y and time. Please note W is a function of x comma y comma. Okay. This is the plate equation actually. Nx del square W by delta x square. Ny del square W by delta y square. Plus this is the mass density h is the thickness of the plate, okay. del square w by delta t square and if you want to add some structural damping, they will put a g of s also, they will put a g of s delta w by delta t, this is some damping term, okay. this is there is a pressure delta p And what is del square, sorry this is del power 4 is nothing but del square by delta x square plus del square by delta y square whole square or in other words del 4 w implies del to the 4 w by delta x 4 plus 2 del 4 w by delta x square, delta y square plus del 4 w over delta y 4 and then d, d is called the flexural rigidity E h cube over 12 into 1 minus nu square, nu is the Poisson ratio, this is flexural rigidity. And then rho m is mass density. Okay. Mass means is that the area. You can say mass per unit thickness. Okay. Because h is the thickness. Mass per unit. You can say unit area. Not unit unit area. That h is the mass of that. Now, this is the plate equation because I am not deriving, I do not know you have done any plate theory or not. Since you have not done plate theory, <laughs> unless you do that plate theory, you will not know. Now, this is what the starting point is, but delta P that is the pressure differential between inside, outside you supersonic flow. So, this is where they use piston theory. But again there were a lot of approximations okay, that was used. I will just briefly give you the kind of approximations which people have used and you will know that that is due to piston theory only. Because piston theory what we had, you remember piston theory that is a high frequency approximation. Okay. Piston theory says P some 0 plus this is due to piston theory. Okay. 
which we derived earlier, high frequency of the supersonic. Okay. We had rho a infinity w bar a at x. Okay. Right? W bar a is Or sorry, W bar into if it is oscillating, this is W bar E i omega t, that is all. Okay? But W bar E i omega t you know from the, because W a is what? W bar a E i omega t which is delta z aerofoil, delta t plus u infinity delta delta x, right? You got this expression. This is, see w is the velocity and this is the surface. Z a is the displacement at that point. Now, in Z a you substitute w of the plate deflection Okay. Here that W is plate, here this W is a velocity. So, please understand we should not get a confusion over these two. Okay. Now, this is where they use the piston theory. Then there were a lot of uh, different different approximations. So, I will just give you a couple of uh, uh, equations which people have used and that will just give you some idea what they did was p minus p infinity okay is this is from square root of m square minus 1 into delta w by delta x plus 1 1 over u delta w by delta t okay because you know q is half or they have different expression also. Sometimes they have put one more term here for different Mach number that was derived from another approximation. That is why you will find in the literature on plate theory, I will give just the reference. Different expressions they are using. Okay. But you use Sometimes people neglect this term also. Okay. Because this represents the instantaneous. What is this? Delta W by delta T is the velocity at that point divided by U, that is the local angle of attack. Okay. This is local slope. So you add both of them. Okay. Now this is there were uh, modifications to this type of uh, this expression, there were considerable modifications there. Q papers use different. Now, and in the 60s, I will give the reference now. There were a lot of studies which were uh, performed on this uh, panel flutter uh, problem. What is I will give two key references, okay. Then uh, from there you can track down. Even now, some publications in uh, fluids and structures they write about panel flutter for composite uh, materials. So, this is by Dowell, Dowell and this is theoretical. And experimental panel flutter studies in the Mach number range 
1.0 to 5.0. This is AI, AA journal, volume 5, no not volume 5, volume 3, Sorry. volume 3, number 12, December 1965 and the page number 2292-2304. This is one paper and another paper is this by Dugunji. Because there were few people and then similarly don't they all did the theoretical considerations. of panel flutter at high supersonic mark number. Okay. This is also A double journal volume four. This is uh, July 1966, this page 1257, 1266. Okay. See these two references pretty much they tell you because there is a nothing difficult about the problem because you are not exposed to panel equations. Okay how they are obtained that thinking is the panel equation under compressive load or you can say on this side and then there is a pressure that pressure expression is given here. Of course, they have different please note here there is another also they will have some factor multiply some m square minus I think I will just give that because this is from an approximation. That is why you will suddenly find what is this different people are using m square minus 2 over m square minus 1. This term will be sitting here along with p minus p infinity. p infinity is now you know pressure inside is p infinity. The top is so this is the delta p at any point simply substitute this is in terms of w you know w w w. Now what this equation they have solved for different different A by B and then uh, found out the condition under which it will have flutter. Okay. These are non dimensionalized and things like that. Because I know the procedure since you have not done plate problems, you know, there is no point in going into uh, in depth. Okay. But this is just to give you an idea that, but one of the simplest thing is to avoid panel flutter thickness. If the thickness is a little bit more than panel flutter, but then earlier it was all metallic structure. Then they said can we eliminate panel flutter with the composite. So now with the composite structure you can have that then lot of publications came in that. See one is the mathematical approach to get the plus speed. Okay. Another one is depending on the choice of material can I postpone my basically the flux speed if I postpone then it will be fine. Okay. So, these are studies once the composite structure came then Weiser there is one another paper by Weiser also. But I thought these are old classical 65, 66 paper, but YC Fung also has done on panel printing. So, in the 60s there are a lot of studies. Okay. Now, also you will find if you do the Google search you will find panel flutter recently 2002-04 some publications are coming with reference to panel problems. Okay. And uh, I think with this uh, just a brief note on panel flutter. There are other types of uh, flutter problems also. Okay, I'll just one is. Uh, 
nonlinear product which they call it nonlinear product, but that implies it is actually a nonlinear problem. All this we have done linear theory. Okay, nonlinear flutter you can have a salt flutter. Salt flutter in the sense your aerofoil goes into stall and then again it comes back, get attached. Okay, so these are all. Then there is a there is one is stall. Okay. Another one is transonic bus. But even uh, another problem I will tell you. See, you will find this is all in the late 90s. I would say suddenly people started talking LCO. That is limit cycle. Oscillation. See what this is limit cycle oscillation means it happened in some of the I think fighter aircraft something it started vibrating, but it did not flutter in the sense flutter is it has to completely get into a unstable, but it did not become unstable means it will break the amplitude will keep on increasing only. But in the limit cycle oscillation, what happened is the amplitude reached the stage and then it started only within it oscillated continuously. Then what was the problem? So now people started getting into nonlinear effects because the moment some large amplitude comes, the nonlinear effects of the problem comes. Even in your own this type of uh, Can I have a limit cycle oscillation? Okay. In the sense, it will not go out of bounds, but it will continue to oscillate. That means you can have nonlinearity from two sources: one from the aerodynamics, another one from structure itself. Structural nonlinearity means I can put this spring K H, K alpha, not linear spring. They are non-linear strings. Okay. Then I can assume some non-linear. Analyze the flutter problem. Then show that beyond that speed, well, it doesn't blow up, but it continues to oscillate. And another one is aerodynamic non-linearity. You can have stall because if the amplitude goes a little more, then what will happen is you start having some kind of a bounded motion. Bounded, but continuously. This will lead to a lot of fatigue life because fatigue damage will uh, completely will be very severe because you you are continuously vibrating. Okay. Now we have done one that is a, one of the PhD students did, but there are lot of studies on this. Now that LCO. Okay. Then. Stall flutter, of course, helicopter blade. We know that it goes into stall and comes out of the stall and things like that. Okay, we use this basically the stall model for this, and then we said that there can be a chaotic motion. Also. Okay, in this sense, chaotic motion means there will be all sorts of frequencies coming into the picture. But it is a deterministic problem. Please understand, it is not a random problem. <laughs> Everything is deterministic, but it is nonlinear problem. So nonlinear problems have their own uh, what do you call phenomena. Like uh, suddenly you start seeing bifurcation in the sense you will expect one type of motion suddenly it can go this way or this way. Okay, then you can have more frequencies coming into the picture, and you can have chaotic motion. Okay, so these are all in the nonlinear domain. But there, it is essentially the research group. Whatever they are working on, they get into that. They solve that problem. Okay. But transonic is a nonlinear problem. That is different. Here, stall. You have to have a stall model. Okay. 
okay because it is a flow is attached detached all our theory is attached flow potential flow small disturbance everything okay so you find the field is also growing in different areas now another one is micro stuff whatever we is doing and there the ranach number or whatever is stuff a different uh, <laughs> zone all together okay and they have the viscous the fluid viscosity is more important and uh, they have their own theories develop but still they use only edarson theory and other thing edarson theory is what is a potential flow okay there is no viscosity or anything but they will make statement but finally use edarson theory for even uh, Uh, yes. Yes, that's all. They will use that and then solve the problem. 